Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Do you struggle finding a t-shirt that fits as well as the one t-shirt that you have in your wardrobe that you love until it finally wore out? Do you wish that that standard medium was just a little bit longer? Or for me, that extra large didn't have to be a 2X to get the length. Guess what? We got this taken care of and you've got to check out Coulter Dillon. They've mastered the perfect fit. They've added fabric color options and personalized artwork to deliver the perfect fitting t-shirt. Forget those pre-done t-shirts that every size doesn't fit anyone. They have custom fitted t-shirts today and you can save 50% off. That's right. 50% off by using our tech time radio code. Use the code tech 50 at colterdillon.com to get this special offer. Again, that's C-O-L-T-E-R-D-I-L-L-O-N.com to get the perfect fitted t-shirt. Make sure to use that code TECH50, that's T-E-C-H-50, for 50% off your first order. Welcome to the Haunting, Unearthly, and Paranormal Stories podcast. Each week will be a different event, whether paranormal or some other strange and unexplained happening. Maybe even a haunting located near you will be examined and relayed to you. These events and stories are based on events and have been given to us by the people who experience these events in their own lives. These weekly journeys we take together will lead us down deserted roads, into the deep and dark forests, and through the doors of buildings we should not enter. Pull up a chair and join me as we take a step into the unknown, here on the Haunting, Unearthly, and Paranormal Stories podcast. Just remember, believe those that you choose, or believe in none. It is your choice. We would like to thank Podcorn for sponsoring this episode of Tech Time Radio. Explore sponsorship opportunities and start monetizing your podcast by signing up at podcorn.com forward slash podcasters. Let me tell you about Podcorn. Podcorn is an absolute must for any podcaster starting out. Now, when we started out Tech Time Radio, we started out in a back office with a couple of mics. We expanded to a studio and then now, as you can see, we're on the radio and have distribution into other markets. Having the ability to have Podcorn at the start of our podcast would have been a dream come true. Guess what? With Podcorn, you now have the amazing opportunity for podcasts to receive sponsorship, such as host reads, interview segments, and topical discussions. With Podcorn, there's no middleman. Podcasters of all size can browse and choose opportunities right on their platform, set their own rates, and collaborate with brands directly without exclusivities. You never give up the rights of your podcast in Podcorn, and they're here to support you everywhere possible. Visit podcorn.com. Again, that's podcorn.com. Podcorn is a true success for those starting their podcast dreams. Broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented stylized radio program the information that will make you go hmm pull up a seat raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person welcome to tech time radio with nathan mum Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm, technology news of the week, the show for the common everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology with a bit of whiskey on the side. I'm Nathan Mum, and welcome to our show as we live stream during our show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch TV, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to watch us live or visit us at techtimeradio.com and tweet during the show at hashtag techtimeradio, and we'll do our best to respond to all those tweets live as they come in. I'm your host, a technologist with over 30 years of expertise working for companies like Microsoft and Vulcan Inc., and a keynote speaker on technology subjects from security to blockchain and everything in between. My co-host, Mike Day, is an award-winning author, originally from Arizona. He is a human behavior expert living in the Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology. 
With a 20-plus year career helping others understand human behavior so they can make better decisions, Mike keeps me from geeking out while providing an insight into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. We're two friends that come from different backgrounds but bring the best technology show possible every week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Mike. Hi. Hi. How are we doing today? It's sunny out right now. It is. I know. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. You know, I... It's it's amazing how the seasons go. You know, you got winter, which you're always looking forward to when it's summertime and it's too hot. You're like, man, I just like cozying up to that fireplace. Yeah, and no, sitting I back don't there. have that problem. You don't have that? Well, that's because you're from Arizona, right? Yeah. So you just like it hot all the time. That's true. Okay, okay. So. Even in Arizona, I didn't look forward to wintertime. You didn't look forward no. to wintertime? Oh, okay. Uh, so I enjoy a little wintertime, a hot cocoa. My favorite time back. of the year is uh, fall. Well, I like fall, too, with the beautiful leaves coming on down. You got those nice... Beautiful warm nights. So they're in the seventies up here in the Pacific Northwest. And you can just walk outside and, and nice beautiful days. You yeah. see the beautiful green shrubbery that's still green throughout the year. I just like it because the heat cools down and it's not freezing cold yet. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well. <laughs> all right. Well, we should we yeah, should get on, back. Let's, let's we have a technology let's, show. Yeah. Let's, yeah let's, let's get ready to start our show. That's right. Let's start our show right now. Odie, let's kick off the show. Now on. Today's show. What are we talking about today? Today on the show, we're going to be talking about the war that's currently happening between Russia and Ukraine and the technology aspects of this fight with our guest, Nick Espinosa. Nick's back. He's been off for two weeks. Well, he hasn't been off. He's He's been been off our show for the last two weeks. He's been very busy doing a bunch of cyber uh, counseling with uh, companies across the nation. He's going to be talking about that. And we're also going to be talking, why is Google trying to hide documents from the <laughs> Justice Department here? No way. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And then we're going to look at traits that identify a serial hacker or criminal. That's something in our Mike's Mesmerizing Moment that you're going to kind of give us a little bit of an outline of some of those traits, sure. I hope, right? Yeah. And then back by popular demand, we have our fan favorite, our letters segment. In addition to that, of course, we always have This Week in Technology, Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, and our Pick of the Day Whiskey Tasting. So sit back, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now it's time to start our show with our loaded question of the week, brought to you by Elderberry Boost. Get your Elderberry Boost today at elderberry-boost.com. Mike and Odie, here is your loaded question. What do you wish you had more time for? Sleeping. Sleeping, is that what you're saying, Mike? You want you want to sleep more? Either that or, you know, video games. But I, <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't tell. I should, probably shouldn't say that one on, on the air. On the air and more video games time? That's right. Okay. All right. Odie, question to you. Um, I have a little journal where I put, like, everything that, not everything that I've done, but, like, big moments that I've done. So, like, travel and concerts and festivals. I have not filled that thing since, like, three years ago. And there's, like, a bunch of events that I need to put in that I just keep forgetting to do. do you- you want more journaling time or yeah. more big more time to big put stuff some, to journal about? More stuff to put. I mean, more time to journal. To, to journal. Yeah. Oh, wow. All she got to do is skip. So, one so, of those so, big so you bits. spend all that time journaling. What are you going to do with that when you get older? Well, I'm going to show that to my kids. Be like, oh, this is what I did. I told my mom and dad that I was going to go spend the night at a friend's, and then I really went down to Portland for a Harry Styles concert. Oh, there you I, go. I showed my kids I, a journal I, once, and they <laughs> said, "What's that?" And I said, "It's a journal." He said, "Is it in Kindle format?" <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that's right. All right. No. I hope you have two. I hope you have all boys because the boys will look at you and be like, "Okay, yeah, uh, where's <laughs> Thanks, where's the vi- where, where's the video game machine?" That's right. Thanks, okay. Dad. All right. Well, that was our loaded question. Again, you can always find out more information by visiting us at techtimeradio.com and look at all of our other loaded questions of the week that we cover. And you can also go to elderberry boostcom for your elderberry supplements. All right, Mike, as always, we have our whiskey tasting that we're going to do today during the show and our commercial breaks. We're going to select a whiskey that we have here. We're either going to give it a zero, one, or two thumbs up in our pick of the day. Make sure you listen all the way through to see if Mike gives it a thumbs up or down or if I give it a thumbs up and down and maybe we'll get a little bit over for our uh, engineer and see if she likes it also. So there you go. Definitely, though, we'll find out an interesting fact that will make you go, mm, in this whiskey, because got the whiskey. Yeah, Mark Mumbles are back, right. and, and Mark spent the a lot of time. Mark Mumbles. Yeah, and, and he spent a lot of time on that, so he, he wants to make sure it's it's done Good. right. So there you go. Good. Instead of you pilfering stuff off the internet. <laughs> All right. So now it's our first segment, bringing you the top tech stories <laughs> in the first five minutes of the show. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. 
All right. Welcome to Top Stories in the First Five Minutes. Story number one, Google tries to hide documents from the courts. The Justice Department alleges that they are having problems getting documents for their antitrust lawsuit against Google. The U.S. government is asking the judge to make Google disclose more documents. Google explicitly and repeatedly told employees to shield business documents from being revealed in court through the use of false requests for legal advice. The Justice Department alleged on Monday it's part of the Justice Department's antitrust lawsuits against Google, which has accused the tech giant of illegally holding monopolies in both the search and search advertising. That's amazing. I wouldn't think Google holds no way. a monopoly in that, right? Not at all. All right. That's why you bing it instead of Google it, right? Sure. Okay. All right. The there's search... a there's a there's not a shameless plug there. Okay. The search giant used this approach to hide thousands of documents, including those including details of revenue sharing agreements and Android mobile app distribution. The department says Google did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Of course, they didn't. So you know what? They didn't get back to us and tell us why they're they're doing that, and they didn't get back to the. The other big news articles that have asked for that, we'll see what happens in Google. I was a part of the antitrust uh, issue at Microsoft as an employee when that came Were down. You and told to sh- you, you know shelter what? documents? I, I was, you know, Microsoft did not tell you to shelter any documents. Microsoft at that time really didn't have the organizational structures like SharePoint that they do now at oh, this the, time. So, shredders. So, the, so the, yeah, so a lot of that stuff was like printed and then you, you wouldn't have it any longer. So it's a, probably a different time now with Google in their antitrust lawsuit with documents that are in email attachments and file servers than it would have been back in that time. All uh, right. All right. Story number two, Mike, it's yours. Hey, do you know what an exoplanet is? I have no idea. What's an exoplanet? An exoplanet is a planet that revolves around a sun that is or a star that is not our own. There's not Meaning your own? That is not our own. It okay. Means it's outside of our solar system. It's outside. Okay, that's okay. an exoplanet. That's an exoplanet. So okay. NASA, yeah. Jet Propulsion Lab, has confirmed 5,000 exoplanets beyond our solar system. Oh, seriously? Five, yeah, out of the billions of them that are out there, they have confirmed 5,000 of them. Do you think one of them is Tatooine? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> it's in a galaxy far, far away in a time long ago. But, okay, you know. Okay. So they announced, they announced this is a cosmic milestone. On Monday, they confirmed a discovery of more than 5,000 exoplanets. A new batch of 65 planets located outside our solar system joined the NASA Exoplanet Archive, triggering this celebratory mood. Okay. Uh, we haven't definitely found an Earth clone yet because what they're looking for are planets that resemble Earth and are in what's called a habitable zone. Okay. Meaning they have to be a certain distance away from their respective star. So you can get sun and So they get can heat get the oxygen correct and... amount of heat. Okay. Uh, they have found some that may support life, like the closest one is called Proxima B or Proxima Centauri, which is like four and a half light years away. But okay, uh, they haven't found a clone yet, but they're looking. Uh, they are thinking that the new James Webb Space Telescope is going to help them define more. But uh, that is what's going on with the extraterrestrial front this uh, week. You know, Doctor Cochran's going to do our first. Warp engine well, drive, you just and then can't resist bringing in some sort of. You know, I've been watching Picard lately, <laughs> yeah, season two no right kidding. now. I mean, we're really into the sci-fi time traveling and everything. Do you do you know Picard season two? Spoiler: If you have not seen it, turn your radio dial down right now. But if you have, why are you doing this? Well, well, because if you have seen it, it's all about going back in time. I just tell you, science okay. fiction is all about going back. Well, in time. this is science fact. Okay, this is science this fact. This is science though. fact. Okay, this is, they've confirmed that there are five thousand among the theoretical billions of planets out there in our universe. Are they going to start trying to sell uh, uh, plots off of that? I mean, I get these these offers you to know, buy a little piece. You can sell of... a whole planet these days, so I'm sure I'm sure that if you wanted to go into business and sell planets, you might be able to get away with that. Okay, all right, <laughs> for a little bit. Instead of being a lord in Scotland or get a piece of the moon or whatever. Yep. There you go. Story uh, number three. Story number three. Augmented reality technology has a bright future, specifically in the medical field and spine surgery. Alexander Satin, a spine, is that how you say, that's how you say I'm, it? I'm going to say it that way. Okay, that's me right too. Alexander Satin, a spine surgeon at the Texas Back Uni- uh, Institute, used AR in his practice. 
He outlines some of the key benefits as well as downsides of the technology and considers what the future of spine surgery might look at with greater adoption of AR, which is augmented reality. Essentially, again, that's when you put on your VR goggles Mm -hmm. and you're in the space itself and you can go and kind of manipulate and take a look. So you, you recently used the AR in the office for patients to educate them prior to surgery. The AR headset is not able to provide a comprehensive visual representation, but it is able to do a step-by-step example of what's going to happen in the surgery. Satin said that it far exceeds what he can show patients with an MRI review and surgical models. He chooses to use AR technology for a number of reasons. First and foremost, for his patients, he thinks it enhances their understanding of the spinal pathology and the planned surgical treatment. And second, he believes that it may eventually become ubiquitous with spine surgery. Ubiquitous. Ubiquitous. Still, research is needed to show how this impacts patient satisfaction and understanding compared to traditional uh, techniques in education with the slideshows and the pamphlet handouts. But the future is bright for AR technology and helping shape our medical field. There we go. All right. Mike, our time's up. We got through the top stories in the first five minutes. If you want to learn more about this, please visit us online at techtimeradio.com. Again, that's techtimeradio.com. And click on our episode sections or blog to get even more details, especially now you need to go sign up because we're getting our newsletter to come out by the end of the month. So you want to go and click on the very top right-hand corner, sign up for our newsletter so you can get interesting facts from Mr. Gorday and myself on subjects we don't talk about on the radio. All right, up next, we have our technology insider. We're going to explore software. Uh, We're going to explore the war that we have going on right now with technology. We have Nick Espinoza that is going to be joining us. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's been away for a bit, so essentially we're going to have him get us all up to date on all the technology that's being used in the war. Uh, You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Mike, Odie, and myself. We'll see you after the commercial break. Hey, Mike, have you ever heard of Blue Chew? What are you going to ask me, Nathan? Blue Chew essentially is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form at a fraction of the cost. Tell me more about that. Did you know there are all kinds of reasons guys aren't able to perform age, medical condition, and stress? The chewable for BlueChew.com can help you be able to perform at your best. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no way in line at the pharmacy and it ships right to your door in a discreet package the process is simple sign up at bluechew.com consult with one of the licensed medical providers and once you're approved you'll receive your prescription within days the best part it's all done online blue chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredients and strength for your prescription don't like swallowing pills no problem blue chew tablets are chewable tablets are made in the usa good old america and prepared and shipped direct so it's cheaper than any pharmacy and here's a special deal for our listeners with the promo code tech time to receive your first month free with the use of our promo code tech time at checkout just pay five dollars shipping that's bluechew.com that's bluechew.com promo code tech time to receive your first month free and we thank blue chew for being a sponsor Hey, Mike. What? Have you heard of Elderberry? Only in reference to a Monty Python movie. Well, let me tell you, Elderberry Boost. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. Yes, Mike, that's Elderberry Boost. You can choose Organic Elderberry Boost, that 8-ounce size. It's available on sale right now at eleven ninety nine. But you're listening here right now on Tech Time Radio, so you need to go to Elderberry, that's E-L-D-E-R-B-E-R-R-Y-Boost.com and get some today. Elderberry Boost. Elderberry is an all-natural organic immune system booster and antiviral. Elderberry is known to actively fight against viruses, including colds and the flu. It also works as a natural remedy for allergies, cancer, digestion, heart disease, high cholesterol, headache, toothache, weight loss, and reduced inflammation. It's a natural and healthy diuretic and has many antiviral properties. While it is famous for fighting the flu, it is effective for any illness. Elderberry Boost was created to provide a quality organic elderberry to their customers. After searching years ago for a perfect elderberry syrup, none could be found, so they essentially created their own homemade recipe. If you would like to get 15% off your first order of Elderberry Boost, just put in the discount code TECHTIME at checkout. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. (laughs) 
All right. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. I'm your host, Nathan Mum. We got Mike Day here and Odie behind the board. All right. During our commercial break, we had, of course, our whiskey tasting. Today, we are tasting the Breckenridge Distillery Reserve Barrel Select Bourbon. 86 proof, $64.99 a bottle that we have here. Now, this is essentially known for a blended bourbon whiskey, a high uh, mash American style whiskey. Each reserve blend releases a blended, unique expression that brings out the classic flavors of bourbon. Expression notes range from brown sugar, molasses, caramel, dried orange peel, and vanilla and uh, rye spices. Mm-hmm. So did you taste all that in your... Uh, every one of them. Every one of those? Sure. I did not taste any orange, uh, dried orange peel. I just, uh, whatever they put on the paper, I taste. Okay. They, they, <laughs> all right. So this is produced, listen where it's produced by, by the Canadian Cannabis Company who owns <laughs> Sweetwater Brewing. Sweetwater Brewing. Yeah. So let me, so if you have cannabis and you're making so much money, you don't know what to do is I guess you decided that you're going to now what, start doing. Wasn't this the place that's like the highest place and well, the it, highest. Hang brewing? on. It's, it's, it's produced in Breckenridge. Colorado, USA, that okay. is, quote, known as the world's highest distillery. That's so what they're, they're famous they're, for. They're highest. They're the highest. Now they're the highest. But like the elevation-wise is how they put it in there. Or, but Are you sure? Because well, now they're owned by a cannabis company, well, so they might be the highest in a different way. They may be. It's 86 proof. Um, very interesting aspect about this is that this company is also looking to do THC-infused spirits. Oh, I can't wait for that. <laughs> So there you go. So you can be not, a not only color. not only can I feel no pain by drinking, I can feel no pain by THC. Uh, that's right. Okay. Well, we'll see if this gets a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So far, it's by, pretty good. It, it does have it's a refreshing tasty taste and smooth. All right. Now we're going to head on to our next segment. We're going to welcome Nick Espinosa back to the show. Let's start off with our segment. Welcome to Technology Insider. We get the information directly from the source. Today, we're talking about the war currently happening between Russia and Ukraine and the technology aspects of this fight. Today on the show, we bring back our technology expert, Nick Espinoza from Security Fanatics. Hi, to, Nick. To give us an update on a few stories about technology in this fight against misinformation and propaganda. Welcome back, Nick. How has your last two weeks been? You've been very busy. Tell us a little bit about your last two weeks without getting into too many details. Yeah, it's been nuts. It's been absolutely nuts. And Nathan, I just want to say thank you for saying spoiler alert mute. Otherwise, I'd be <laughs> hacking your accounts right now and you'd be investing <laughs> in Russian futures if you gave away Picard season two to me. I'm just saying that right now. Okay. Nathan's okay. horrible okay. about that. What's that? Well, you, it. Uh, uh, right. you know what? I'll just tell you. It's gonna. I can already guarantee you're going to want to watch season two and season three no, that just guy, finished he's, filming. He's the guy that watches a movie, then watches it again with somebody who hasn't seen it and tell him, hey, watch this, what's coming up. Yeah. I do do that. I yeah. pause it. I tell my wife, hey, here's a good part coming up. She's like, yeah. oh, thanks. That's fantastic. Yeah. So so anyway, yeah, my, my last couple of weeks have been just apps. Since the start of the war, we've actually been basically working in emergency mode, you know, at this point, just, uh, you know, with the various operations for clients that have interests and all of that, uh, you know, in theater and rather in the theater of conflict. So it has been absolutely crazy. Uh, you know, on top of all the interviews, you know, I've been doing with Ukrainian leadership as we've been in direct contact with various ministers, members of parliament, all that kind of stuff. And it's been it's been heartbreaking. It's been surreal. It's just been a very tough couple of weeks. Well, I really appreciate you being on the show. And I understand that sure. though, that we are very supportive of Ukrainian uh, companies, the people. And so we are very pro Ukraine right now as a radio uh, as a radio show goes. Radio show. So, yep, uh, all of us feel very deeply touched. We're going to speak today about the technology aspects. We're going to take a look again as unbiased, just information of what's out there. I did happen to get a uh, tweet from somebody that was sent out that I may ask him some questions regarding some drones in Russian attacks. So I don't know who sent that out, but I think Nick Espinosa did. So we'll talk a little bit about that. that. But let's first t- start off with talking about these deep fakes. We've had a deep fake president used in both Russia and Ukraine that essentially showed uh, Vladimir Putin declaring peace has resurfaced. Then all of a sudden you go and you take a look at the other side and then there's a deep fake out there. The Ukrainian president saying that he has surrendered to Russia. Now, Nick, both sides have kind of used manipulated media to kind of broadcast what they're trying to do, or people are at least filming these deep fakes and putting it out there for people to see in each of the regions that are out there. Um, 
tell me a little bit how how does this information and this deep fake information have to do with the individuals watching it and the conflicts that are currently going on? Right. Well, I, I think it's important actually to start with essentially that propaganda and disinformation itself is as old as warfare. I, it's been going on for centuries. Obviously, it got ramped up you know, with media as we b- developed the radio and television. And now we have dropped a supercharger and it thanks to the interconnectivity of the Internet, social media and all of that. But I think it's important to understand essentially how information is being delivered. And let's start with the Russians. Now, the Russian government has basically shut down all independent media in Russia. So now Russians are primarily getting their information from a a state television show that airs nightly at 9 p.m. on Channel One, the channel in Russia, and it's called Verinya. I believe I'm pronouncing that correct. I believe it means fine in Russian. This show's been on the air since 1956, and it's expected that basically all Soviet citizens back then would stop what they were doing and watch this. Now, I bring this up because essentially there's a good amount of a good amount of the Russian population that grew up in uh, Soviet era. So they trust this broadcast. Most of Russia gets their news from Verenia. Now, all of the anchors and journalists do nothing but parrot government talking points from day to day. And this is what we are seeing as we are tracking this. I'm reading about others that are tracking it as well. And this is essentially what they are saying on state TV. The invasion is going great. There have basically, uh, they're stating that Everything is going swimmingly. The, swimmingly, the Russians, uh, the military are fighting Nazis. They're fighting internationalists. Ukraine is nothing but a beachhead of the United States. And so it was a direct threat to Russian security. Ukraine is nothing but a pebble, to, to put it in their words, to be tossed about by the U.S., NATO, everything else. So it was in Russia's best interest to do this. Also, they are saying that the United States and Ukraine have created biological weapons that they are basically putting into bats and birds to carry these infections wow. into Russia. And elsewhere. So this is an urgent familiar. thing that they needed to do. Now, as for casualties, and this is the other sticking point, right now, the official number that they're claiming as of March 2nd, which is the last time I found a broadcast in, from Verimia or any Russian state media that said the body count for Russian military was at 467. The Ukrainians are claiming 15,000. And so the number obviously is somewhere in between there, but there's more evidence to point to 15,000 than there is 467. They're vastly, vastly underreporting this in Russian media. And studies have shown that 71% of Russians actually, per polling, support Vladimir Putin and this invasion. Even though we are seeing all of these protests, those are the numbers that I could find. Now, as for the Ukrainians, uh, basically, per my last interview with Inna Subson, she's the uh, member of parliament, I interviewed her on Saturday, March 19th, so like a couple of days ago. Basically, all of the Ukrainian networks, which were independent, have now unified to share the same network. So you see like, an, it'd be like here, if ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, et cetera, all unified, and you saw Anderson Cooper standing next to Rachel Maddow, standing next to somebody else, all doing shows together, all unifying on the same broadcast, that is in part to combat disinformation and the deep fakes out there. Basically, the message, uh, the meta message Ukrainians are getting are, don't believe the rumors that your neighbors say about, you know, that video that Zelensky had of him surrendering. Believe all of the independent stations that have banded together to give you accurate information, which would tell you that that is a deep fake. And obviously, Ukrainian internal propaganda tends to be more realistic in nature than Russia, but it's also part motivating, uh, part unifying, part, you know, we're all in this together. And so there you go. That is essentially the state of this. And it is it is just disparate on on both sides. Hey, Mike. So let me ask you a question. Why do people believe So it's great that they unified the communications for these Mm -hmm. stations. Why do people believe these deep fakes where you can see Putin come on out there and say, oh, I surrender or or Zelensky saying, you know what, everybody, we're going to surrender to Russia. Why do people why do the people a make these? It's really easy to do to make these things. Mm -hmm. But why do people actually believe this? Uh, Well, it has it has very little to do with the actual technology and more about just human beings. Human beings, uh, as a as a general rule, can only detect deception about fifty four percent of the time, which is just a little bit over half. And there's reasons for this. A couple of reasons are: a, they want to believe what they're seeing, okay, and b, we tend to uh, believe what's given to us in an authoritative fashion or in a in a third party. So, if you tell me you're a great guy, I may not believe that, but if uh, she does, 
Yep. If Odie tells me you're a great guy, I'm probably going to be more inclined to believe that. So because that's that's the way our makeup is. So we tend to we tend to look it's it's basic it's basic socializing and and not understanding. So it's it's not really about the videos. It's about what people might want to see or want supported. Okay. And especially, you know, with Russia getting only one message. Yeah. Uh, they don't. They really don't have a lot of choices to make. To make that okay, Nick. I got a question for you. So I I saw three different independent stats that essentially said cybercrime has decreased to an all time low in the United States these last few weeks. Is that is that a is that a true fact? I, I think it is from the sources I got it. But is that essentially because everybody now is fighting overseas? Is this curve going to last? What what specifically about this? Uh, a stat here that is kind of surprising to me really sticks out to you. Yeah. So I, I believe the stats. I mean, we ourselves just anecdotally here as security fanatics have seen the same thing. I'll give you a perfect example of this. We were actually in the middle of negotiating with a ransomware group. Uh, they ghosted us for like three or four days, came back, accepted our lowball offer, which surprised me. And then I said, great. And so obviously we're trying to string them out. And I didn't talk to them for a week and a half and they never followed up which is just bonkers because obviously they're holding data hostage. They want money, but they're not talking to us. And so, yes, I think like what we saw in COVID, every cyber criminal on the planet, once COVID hit said, oh, COVID, the world is talking about it. We're going to get involved in that and we're going to use that. In this case, the entire world is focused on Ukraine. You're seeing sanctions against Russia from countries around the globe. Everybody's got an opinion on this. The vast majority of the globe appears to be with Ukraine, the rest with Russia, some in between but everybody is focused on this. So you have hacking collectives, hacking groups that have been, are, are essentially taking sides, launching cyber attacks against Russia. Conversely, you've got a lot of cyber gangs that Russia has sheltered in given safe harbor, such as our evil, which, which I think we're believing is starting to look like Lapsus, which is a new ransomware gang that's out there. They are now starting to uh, launch cyber attacks on behalf of Russia into critical infrastructure, most of which at the moment is focused in Ukraine, but it is starting to spread and we are expecting cyber attacks in the West, including the United States. And so I think this is a short term effect as we start to settle into this war, meaning if Russia essentially captures Kyiv, Kharkiv and others, we're going to see a year, potentially years long insurgency, well-funded and weaponed uh, insurgency by the Ukrainians or Russia is going to be expelled. And then I think if one of those two things happens, life's going to start to get back to normal. We're going to start to see that uptick in ransomware and other cyber crime as well. So I think it's short lived, but it's just because we have such a hyper focused theater of conflict and potentially, unfortunately, World War Three. That's why we're seeing seeing this lull in cybercrime because they've got other things to do at the moment. All right. So Anonymous, let's talk about that. The collective group Anonymous, the hackivist collective, has been bombarding Russia with cyber attacks since declaring public cyber war against them. President Vladimir Putin, in retaliation for the invasion of Ukraine, uh, has essentially purchased its own companies and is using his own companies to kind of combat that. Several people are operating underneath the, the banner of Anonymous, uh, according to the BBC and Taxis, that essentially says they have captured essentially video programming. They've interrupted uh, news programs. Essentially, tell us a little bit about this Anonymous group and what they're trying to do to undermine Putin. Sure. So, I mean, just as a primer, Anonymous is kind of a loose collective of, of hacktivists, meaning hackers that believe in social change or social justice, whatever it means to them that week. And they've gone after a lot of targets very publicly in the name of social justice. So if you remember that incredibly unfortunate incident uh, in Ferguson, Missouri with Michael Brown, Anonymous got involved and hacked the uh, Ferguson Police Department. In protest of that, they've hit government un infrastructure as a for free speech and all of that. So it would make sense if you are looking at essentially somebody that's coming off as a dictator like Vladimir Putin invading another sovereign country that Anonymous would get involved. Now, there's a lot of groups that claim affiliation. And so you're, you're rattling off that list from the BBC. One of the things you didn't mention was one of those affiliated groups known as NB65 or Network Brigade 65 that claims to have actually been able to get into and shut down Russian spy satellites. And so when you are essentially looking at this and the entire governments of the world are basically not quite telling, but telling anonymous, 
eh, we're going to turn a blind eye to prosecution if you're going after Russian infrastructure because we can't. If, let's say the NSA or the CIA went after Russia, that could constitute grounds for World War III as there's you know a NATO element to that. And so the groups of anonymous are kind of getting a free pass to just basically go to town on Russia and go to town they are. And so it's obviously a huge thing right now. And so anonymous has been insanely active in the last month as we've been monitoring, tracking, and interacting with them as well. So it's, it's just been very interesting to see. So, Mike, let me ask you a question about this. So people join these groups, right? So is this all about collective of being a part of something greater that they all come together and kind of form these these groups? Why why, why do people join gangs in, in these kind of cyber groups to, to be a part of these incidents? Well, again, there's no no simple answer to it. But one of them is one of them is. Uh, yeah, they might they might enjoy the benefits of being associated with that group, but they also get to benefit less responsibility. So there's a dispersion of of responsibility when you're a part of a group, okay? Which which creates a, a way that we can, which is interesting. If we talk about the name anonymous, yep, uh, a lot of people will do things that they wouldn't normally do if they're anonymous, okay? So let's talk about that. So anonymous and all these hackers are using a lot of DDoS attacks, right? So DDoS is kind of the old school way of hacking and and sending a lot of replies to a server. Can, Nick, can you kind of give us an overview of these DDoS attacks and and why people use this as a, a form of attack? Sure, sure. So essentially, we all have on the internet, we all have bandwidth, right? We, it basically, the bandwidth in our house and our business allows us to go to from point A to point B. Imagine if that comes under attack. Imagine if somebody ties up all of your bandwidth thwarting attacks so that essentially you can't get in or out uh, like your normal speeds or you can but it's like dial-up speed like AOL from the 1990s level but in modern times that's essentially what a DDoS is a distributed denial of service and so these denial of service attacks essentially do just that they deny the internet uh, basically service from from whatever location. So if you are looking at, let's say, a government agency, a government entity like uh, the Kremlin's website, you know, sitting in Moscow, if you run a denial of service attack against the website, then nobody can get to the website. The website doesn't function, meaning the information delivery, let's say that the Kremlin website or a news website or a news broadcast would have, if that goes down, then it can't be spread to the people. And so these are very effective. Uh, we have seen just massive denial of service attacks since about 2016 or so, uh, starting with the Mirai virus, which many believe actually was crafted by Russian intelligence, as they are continuing to use variants of the Mirai virus today that was infecting IoT devices like DVRs, cheap routers, all those kinds of things, and weaponizing them using all of these residential and business internet connections to combine together to attack targets. And so now we are seeing that basically bandied about. If we can knock out infrastructure, we can knock out services. And a perfect example of that is a massive, thanks to the Mirai virus a few years back, denial of service attack against uh, basically Amazon's East uh, based infrastructure here in the United States, and like half of Starbucks went down. Meaning you couldn't use, you couldn't get, you know, use your credit card at Starbucks or get coffee because their point of sales went down. Home Depot went down. Netflix went down. Like all of these various services. And so denial of service attacks are a very effective way to essentially grind to a halt an economy and infrastructure as well. All right. So last question here, and then we're going to have to continue on our segments. You, you, you tweeted something out. Again, and we're going to, at the very end of this, we're going to let everybody know how they can get in touch with you and how they can listen to your great interviews regarding the Ukrainian government that you have available for people to listen to. But tell us about this drone attack. So you, you tweeted out something very interesting that you said that Russians are now starting to use some drones in the war itself. Can you explain a little bit about that to me? Sure, sure. So basically, this was my this was yesterday's podcast slash daily video for me. Uh, there's a company that is actually it's a subsidiary of Kalishnikov, uh, basically the maker of the AK-47, and they are making what are known as artificial intelligence based suicide drones. Now these apparently are about twenty pounds or so. And essentially what they do is they use artificial intelligence, meaning there is no human that has to operate them. They will hover ab above a target, analyzing it for up to 30 minutes, flying it around 80 miles per hour. So they're very hard to hit. 
And essentially, when they find an acceptable target, they will dive bomb it and self detonate a about a six or seven pound high yield explosive against the target. They can take out tanks, they can take out civilians. But the problem that we have here is because there's no operator, the Ukrainians have drones, but they are man powered, meaning we as humans have to operate them. These drones make decisions based off the artificial intelligence to attack. So the point I made in the video slash podcast yesterday was, what if the drone, the artificial intelligence sees a, a school a school full of children or a group of children and thinks this is an acceptable target? There's nothing stopping it. There's no operator to discern like an artificial intelligence, you know what I mean? Or, or discern better than an artificial intelligence. It's a terrifying prospect for war when we are taking and essentially dehumanizing that aspect of war and giving it to computers. There's no emotions. There's no checks against that. I think this is one of the most devastating things we have developed in technology since nuclear weapons and warfare. It is a terrifying prospect and they're actively being used uh, according to all intelligence reports and pictures that were posted by Ukraine, the Ukrainian Defense Forces to Telegram how they're getting this message out of one of these drones. They're made by a company called Zala, Z-A-L-A, which is a subsidiary, again, of Kalishnikov. So terrifying prospect for war. All right. So if people want to learn more about this and to connect with you, Nick, what's the best way to do that? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can find me at LinkedIn at slash Nick Espinoza, YouTube at slash Nick Espinoza, or Twitter at, uh, at Nick A-E-S-P. Feel free to follow. All right, Nick, always a pleasure talking with you. I'm sure we'll talk to you uh, sooner than later again about some updates regarding the technology being used in war. Thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye, Nick. Bye. All right, well, that ends our segment, Technology Insider. When we return, we have This Week in Technology. See you right after the break. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's happening? Have you heard of Foul Play, a true crime podcast? No, Nathan. Hey, guys. Let me tell you a little bit about Foul Play. What, 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 whose voice is that, Mike? I think that's Mark Mumbles. Foul Play is one of the oldest true crime podcasts. Murder, mystery, serial killers. Oh, my. Let us take you on a journey to discover some of the most unbelievable minds of the most wicked monsters imaginable. We might even solve a few cold cases again. Now, it's hosted by crime journalist Shane L. Waters, Netflix The Keeper star Gemma Hoskins, and crime writer Wendy C. It's foulplay.com. Thanks, Mark. Foul Play, a true crime podcast. And you can find that on any of your standard podcast services. Just search for Foul Play, a true crime podcast. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, do you ever feel tired, have a headache, or maybe a little bit under dehydrated? Yeah, I get told that I need to hydrate more often. Guess what, Mike? I have a solution for you. What And what is it? Hydronique Hydration. The electrolyte power drink packets are available for you now. Started in the midst of the pandemic, the founder of Hydronique Hydration, a frontline healthcare worker, started developing constant headaches. Do you know that most powdered drinks on the market have tons of sugar and caffeine, especially those rock star and Gatorade substitutes? Yeah, like you drink. So I'm going to need to change. So what did the founder do? Well, that's why he created Hydronique Hydration, sugar-free, keto-friendly, plant-based, antioxidant-rich, electrolyte powdered packets for daily use containing all the essential vitamins and minerals with a refreshing taste their product contains elderberry elderberry which has immune boosting properties for supporting during cold and flu season hydronique hydration electrolyte powder packets can also fit in your bag or suitcase when traveling your busy days in 2022 can change do you want a sugar-free keto-friendly vitamin drink to give you hydration boosts if so Give Hydronique Hydration a try. You can visit the website at www.hydroniquehydration. It's www.hydroniquehydration.com. hydration.com. That's the word hydration and unique mashed together. Or you can search for Hydronique Hydration on Amazon.com or on their own website at hydroniquehydration.com. And now... 
Let's look back at this week in technology. This week in technology on March 21st, 2006. Dorsey, Jack Dorsey, sent a social media network first ever tweet saying, just setting up my TWTTR, just setting up my Twitter. Not quite one step for man, but it gets the point across of being very concise. At that time, TWTTR, which is again Twitter, didn't look anything like it does today. To send a tweet, one would have to text a message to a specific forum number. From there, a short message would be broadcast to a selected group of friends. Well, this may seem clunkily and overachieving and respective, it didn't stop Twitter from becoming a popular inner office messaging platform. According to Business Insider, employees obsessed with Twitter were racking up monthly SMS billing, totaling wow. hundreds of dollars during the time. Remember when you had to pay for SMS text messages? I didn't text. You didn't text, so that was the case. Jack Dorsey, though, sold this tweet later as the first ever NFT to be sold for $2.9 million with proceeds going to charity. Yeah, crazy, that. Isn't that amazing? You, you send something electronically, and then all of a sudden, boom, it becomes an NFT, and you sell it for two point one. Point nine million dollars. Yeah. Well, that was our This Week in Technology. Have you ever wanted to share some tech time history? Well, just jump on over and visit techtimeradio.com with over two years of videos. You can take a look at both Mike and I in our very first episodes all the way up to what we're doing today. And we have NFTs, too. We do have NFTs. That's right. Well, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we have our fan favorite letters. We'll see you right after this break. Hey, Mike, did you know that Unidragon puzzles are a great relaxation? Yes, I did. The 21st century widespread digitalization pushes people to have gadget-free rest. In this case, puzzles become a convenient and actual way of having rest. Yeah, they're a great way to relax. They give your brain a reboot. Is Make sure that you visit Unidragon.com with the discount code for 10% off with the code TIME10. That's T-I-M-E, the number 10, for all of our Tech Time fans across the nation. Do you know that puzzles are relatively simple tools that solve a complex range of problems? In game form, we learn useful, analytical, and communicative skills that will find the application in work, study, and other spheres of life. Yeah, they are great forms of relaxation and revitalization. Do you know that Unidragon's collections now have dinosaurs? Oh, that's my that's that's one of my favorite things. You got to make sure you keep the promo code. It's time ten because all of our audience across the nation can use time ten to receive a ten percent discount at Unidragon. That's Unidragon.com. Don't be fooled by other imitation puzzle makers. Visit Unidragon.com, the only spot for your true thinking. Puzzles. All right, in this segment, we read emails sent to the host. These emails are those received during the week that include scams, phishing emails, and all out mistruths disguised as legitimate emails in our segment. I got a letter from a listener. Here is a listener letter. Okay. They, they forwarded it to us, and it says it's from a Julia. And let me tell you, the Julia name comes up as first name dot last name at geog dot at. So first off, if you're sending an email and it comes up first name dot last name, probably not a legitimate email, right? Probably. All right. So this is kind of concerning. So here's what the subject is: urgent response needed. Hello, how are you? Sorry to encroach your privacy. Your privacy. I'm Julia from Ukraine, a frontline worker. I need assistance to help move some funds out to here. That's why I contact you. Please get back to me for further communication. Thanks. Link here. Uh huh. So does that really sound like a legitimate email? You know, it sounds a little legitimate. It does. You know, so this is a person a using a crisis now, that's going on right, right now. Now, the problem I have with that, Yep. just coming from a... A everyday person thing. Yep. Is if she's emailing you specifically for help, why is she sending a link? Yeah, I, I don't. You know what? I I totally agree with that. Right. And and, and probably when you're the email comes from Julia at first dot last name. Yeah. Probably not a very probably safe not. safe one. All right. I think you have one there, Mike. Uh, this is from Ms. Ramona Caswell. Oh. Which is uh the email address associated with this name is CME. 
dash direction at polyclinique dash atlantique dash or dot fr. Oh, that sounds real. That sounds legitimate. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> what does it say? Shalom. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm sorry to have invaded your privacy this way. I have a project of thirteen million dollars six hundred nine thousand USD that I would love to partner with you. Kindly respond back to me, and I will explain in detail to you. Regards. Ms. Ramona Caswell, Chief Internal Auditor, Banking Division. Oh, Banking Division of what? Just Banking Division? That's the company. It's called Banking Division. Polyclinic Atlantic. Okay. I don't know. All right. Did so you what, did you answer this email? I did not answer that oh. email again. Was that that email is trying to see if this is a live email this account? Is a live email account. And they're using they're using a great reward. A right. big number that makes people go. Ooh, Ooh. I, I, this I is that. this is like the prince. Got to be legit. All right, I got. I I. You know what? This one isn't as good. You have one. Why don't you finish this off with one more? We'll do one more. All right. Well, I chose this huge one that somebody forgot to BCC or blind. Yeah, blind this, so, they, copy. so I have literally like so, a, a hundred emails on there, right? Yep. So it's from account revision marshals at em dot marshals dot com, and it's sent to a bajillion people. Probably a sign that it's not a legit email. Probably. Account. Okay. And then it's uh, full of graphics. It says art and object, news alert. We're writing that. I'm going to read it. You got to read it exactly, we're right? Go- we're writing to inform you that your account has been, period, locked. Our system checked. There are unmatched billing information while create new orders. Wow. We need to take this action for your safety. Wow. In most cases, we need to confirm. And that's confirms. And that's just not confirms. It's, it's, it's conf- possessive. Okay, it's confirms. C O N F I R M apostrophe S. Okay. New address match to with the card issuer. Oh, that sounds really. This sounds like a little bit of broken English didn't quite translate really well this on is, the Google. This Translator. is somebody who should have used Grammarly to scam you with. <laughs> they could have. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So yeah. So what should is, you do with that email, Mike? We need to verify new billing information for the same information's credit card use issuer for this moment pending your orders pending canceled. Watch for our future update. So yeah. it has a little check now box. Did you check now? I, I did the check now box. The check now box went to a completely different site. They said, please enter your email and your name and hit enter. Okay, so this was a this so was is this a, an attempt a, active to, email? Yep. So again, it's trying to fish to see if you're actively going to respond to emails. Right. So we have... What what are the most common types of attempts to scam you? Is active email. Active email and then and then of course for you to click on a link and when you click on that link to send somebody money. Send somebody money, but there's also the account information. And there's the account information. Where you're, essentially you type in your username and password right. and you think you're trying to log on to the legitimate site and then they steal your username and password. So the 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 thing for today is if you get something from a Ukrainian person asking for money, yes, that's probably not a Ukrainian person asking for money. That's right. All right. Let's move right into our Mike's Mesmerizing Moment. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right. So tell us a little bit about serial hacker, serial... Uh, individuals that essentially like to be... Well, the first thing that came to my mind when you asked me this last night is, isn't the isn't the hacker pretty much means they're serial? Probably, right? I guess so. Because right. they're doing it all were, the time. Yeah, so we, we were talking about how do, you, how do you figure out a serial hacker? Well, uh, that's that's a that's a conversation. So, okay. but, uh, but we talked a little bit about serial criminals or yep. criminals... And two of the most important pieces to a, a serial crime or crimes that are linked are, are the MO or the modus operandi and the signature. Now, with when we have hackers that are serial offenders, the MO is going to be very strict because there's only certain ways you can hack things, right? Okay. So that's a little bland. So you have to go with the signature. You have to kind of figure out what it is what it is that they're going after so why why what companies are they choosing what it doesn't mean that we can identify this person it just helps sort of narrow a pool okay and a signature is something unique that they use that has really nothing to do with with the actual business of the crime okay so like uh uh Richard or Ricardo Ramirez which is a night stalker he used to he used to paste the herb 
draw a pentagram, pentagram at each at one his, at his scenes. That's a signature. It didn't have anything to do with what he did, but it was unique and special to him, which is part of that uh, need that they're satisfying. So if you can find okay. a signature that a hacker is using, then you can probably link different crimes. All right. Well, we need to go to our pick of the day. It's our Breckenridge Distilleries Reserve Barrel Select Bourbon. Uh, you going to give it a thumbs up or thumbs down, Mike? I'm going to give it a thumbs up. All right. Thumbs up, Odie. What did you think? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. I give it a thumbs up. So there's three thumbs up around. And it's a little expensive, but I think it's well worth it to have the taste of the smooth whiskey that you have. All right. So if you want to be a part of the show, make sure you visit us at techtimeradio.com. Click on the Be a Caller. And remember, for everything that we do, the science of tomorrow starts with the technology of the day. I'm Nathan Mum. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube, so check us out on youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.